individualism is both a, a catalyst and a, a perpetuator of so many social ills um, and a kind of multi crises that our world uh, finds itself in today. Individuals create themselves through reciprocity. And this happens on a, on a very plain level. It happens through the actions of our bodies, of my body, human body, and the tree bodies. Yeah. And uh, suppression of the individual or the, the subsumption of the individual to the community never actually works. It just forces the individuality and the expression of the individual to take a covert form. And paradoxically enough to come out in ways that are even more toxic. View the antidote to individualism um, as communalism, so building communities of, of varying sorts. Um, but what we miss when we do that, perhaps, is that the individual is, is to perceive that the individual is also uh, the seed of radical change. Individuality is a paradox. And I, I, th I think this came up very well in, in Mina's talk. Um, and it's a paradox not because we somehow have run into a um, so social or cultural or political impasse and we made it one, but it's a paradox by its biological constitution or by its living nature. There's a, a question here about who are we or that or individually who am i that because it is because we are living in a time of transition in our understanding of of who we are and what a self is and because we look with horror on what we have done as a species and what maybe i have done in complicity with that or as a member of that species, there's like a level of, of repudiation. Well, on, one, on the one hand, repudiation of what we have been, and on another level, a desire to be something else. And so that energy can feed into ideologies that deny and suppress the individual. When we categorically vilify individualism, um, I think we often end up with a romantic view of community. And that is also a great risk because uh, what happens then, which I think we probably all can, can see in, in different shapes and forms, is that um, we grow frustrated when we're trying to build community. Love is not a feeling. Love is a practice which maintains the individual as a individual. So love is actually an ecological practice. Identity rests on associating with particular truths or maps of reality. It says, this is my belief, and now it's my identity. This is my perspective, and now it's my identity. And when that perspective or belief becomes threatened, so does identity, right? And then dissonance arises. And one of those forms of dissonance, for me, exists as that tension you were talking about before between being an individual and being in community at the same time. Like what part of me says, yes, um, my individuality is toxic. Like that is so profoundly anti-biological. I mean, I don't see my dog or my chickens outside suppressing their individuality in any way. So, so, Look, why why do we attempt that? Why why have we turned on, on ourselves? For instance, Margaret Thatcher um, famously said that there's no such thing as society. There are only individuals. So it's really easy to, to see how individualism can uh, lend itself to a very dangerous kind of conservative thinking. But you're not un unraveling alone. You're unraveling in, in togetherness with um, all the other beings. So it's a it's a it's a process of mutuality, or you could say it's a it's the sort of um, embodied proto community, which we are always inhabiting, and which, as Mina said so nicely, um, of all communities, is not unproblematic. Uneradicable tension between the group and the individual, that 
maybe can never be resolved and never go away. And it's actually necessary paradoxically for the expression of our individuality. The paradox is basically that individualism kind of creates the conditions for, for freedom. So for um, self-realization, for non-conformity, for human rights, um, but it simultaneously ensures that those freedoms can't happen. And wildly oscillating between merging and autonomy, which ultimately ends up in resentment, because you realize you haven't fallen in love with the other person. You have fallen in love with the projection or the idealization, which is applicable to so many other relationships as well. And now when I'm kind of relating to people romantically or otherwise, without getting to you know, analysis paralysis about it, I'm, I'm going into it, I'm like, what am I bringing into this? Like, what, what projections am I bringing into this? And I can't ever fully know. I can't ever fully bracket, bracket my projections. There will always be some level of that going on in relationship that will create a chasm between us that it's just always gonna be there. And there's something really frustrating about that. But what is the flip side of that? Is it total merging and, and union? Because that can also become toxic because that's where you lose your identity and start getting reactive. So ecology is, the relational system which organizes the creation of individuals through the dissolution of individuals. Or to use a word which I like very much, ecology is the process of reciprocity which allows individuals to arise through mutual transformation. That identity comes through relationship and that we know ourselves by being in relationship to the world and being known by the world. When, when we are cut off from relationship, then identity begins to unravel. Really and truly what our individualism is, it's, it's completely connected to the part of our psyche that is also an artist. Um, and, and in reverse or, or you know, in return, the part of us that is an artist is also the part that, is, that believes in um, a greater and more elevated way of our being humans together. Ecosystems are love processes. And I don't mean they are sentimental love processes because they're so beautiful and they're so symbiotic and they're so, so soft and sweet and full of birds and bees and all this. I don't mean it like this. They're love processes because they are about um, the dividuation of the individual. So they are actually about being edible. That's the, the loving thing about them. I love the, the Buddhist idea of um, the relative and the ultimate dimensions. And, you know, you've got the literally relative dimension of things relating and then the ultimate dimension of unity. And then, you know, the stuff that I know about animism kind of says, well, it goes beyond that binary and it's not monism either. So what is it? It's like none of these things and it's all of these things at the same time. Emotions flare so intensely over differences of opinion. You know, what's really at stake here? What's at stake is belonging, relating, and therefore existing. Very important to have people who inspire us, um, whether it is that they inspire us to, um, to, to learn from them, to, uh, to sort of gain knowledge from what they know, but most importantly, that people who inspire us to be the best versions of ourselves, to use a cliche. Um, and, you know, again, again, this is where in a community of individuals, that kind of thing can happen. Whereas in a society of individuals that is driven by capitalism and consumerism, um, we are more invested in, we think that we can inspire ourselves to that. We, we think that our pursuit of enlightenment is, uh, you know, something that we generate ourselves. I mean that ecology is about building relationships that foster life. And, um, and that's very important, by the way. It's just a footnote. Um, it is not enough because that's very popular that um, in, in our circles, let's say, that you, that you say, well, you know, it's not about objects. It's actually about relationships. But it's not enough to say this because relationships can be horrible, as you know. So we need to, we need to understand that, um, that, that living individuality in, in connection is about relationships um, which foster life. Yeah, you know, I mean, we just turn on ourselves so easily and 
and pathologize some of the most fun and 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 beautiful and maybe ultimately tragic parts of the human experience. But I certainly don't want to put romance into the uh, you know bin of pathology. It's such a gift. And, and there's a lot of um you know, sentiment in the kind of social change community against duality and against binaries. And I, I can totally resonate with that. And against, you know, even the theme of this week that, you know, some people were like, well, it's the individual and the community car rise. It's not the individual and then the community. And I, I, mm -hmm. I totally get that. It's it's always car rising. We have to have the the boldness to to speak about those uncomfortable truths, because otherwise we end up replicating um, the same patterns over and over again. So I, I really think that, you know, community is, um, is a space in which courage um, is, is, is actually being asked of us more and more. An ecosystem is not the resolution of the, this tension between being yourself and um, giving your, away yourself to the whole, because being edible for sure means that in order to be yourself, you need to be able to give, you, give away yourself to, to the others. There's something true in the concept of sovereignty that when it takes into account the relational nature of existence there's something true in it when i take into account my responsibility as sovereign isn't just to to me it's to the kingdom that there is a, a tone of um of loss in the ecstasies of embodied existence it's always there and maybe this is even um this is even the place where our embodied existence is most close to the sacredness of life when we need to acknowledge that um, this loss happens writing and we go through that self-censoring like oh but if i express in a certain way or if this is too much about my identity, then I'll be called a narcissist or I'll be called self-absorbed or I'll be called somebody who is a self-promoter. And there's this tension between like the expressivity, the natural like inherent must be expressness of our humanity and the, the self-censorship and the worry, like I'm gonna be judged um, for being myself. And it's, um, yeah, the baby is being thrown out with the bath you know, Quite for many of us, you know, quite unfamiliar to like really let yourself be seen just goes against so much programming it's like seems kind of crazy and and because because like in my case you know even though i mean i had a beautiful upbringing but somehow still lodged within me was this idea that the real self is contemptible and i better not let anybody see me for real so you know the result of always hiding some part means that I'm always alone in that part. And I guess the at some point, you know, I just got sick of that.